Good morning and welcome to St. Martin's Lutheran Church in Annapolis, Maryland. We're glad that you're worshiping with us this morning. My name is Christine Sint and I am the administrative assistant and bookkeeper here at St. Martin's. I have been a member here for over 17 years and over those years and through today, I remained thankful and blessed to be a member of this church. I am thankful for the staff who I work with day in and day out. I am also thankful for our church council and the leadership that they provide. I am also very thankful for all the committees and those that volunteer on them and, and those that they bless. And finally, I am very thankful for our congregation whom I, who are a blessing to support each and every day. And finally, if you are a guest, far or near, I am thankful for you tuning in to us today. Today is the first Sunday in Advent. Let us be thankful, let us rejoice. Blessings to you all. Gathered together as God's people, during this holy season of Advent, we are particularly mindful of our need for a Savior and particularly thankful that God has given us one. And so during these days of preparation, let us prepare our hearts now to sing his praises through the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. We confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger, we have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted in Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
My friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O Emmanuel, our King and Lawgiver, the expected of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, O Lord our God. See, the name of the Lord comes from afar. His splendor fills the whole world. On this first Sunday of Advent, our Gospel lesson is taken from the 13th chapter of St. Mark's Gospel. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels to gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord prays to you, O Christ. Before I share my sermon, I wanted to say a few things to the kids. Uh, we're going to be having some special guests uh, share children's messages in the coming weeks. But today, since we're starting into a new season of the church year, it's a new church year, the first thing that I bet you noticed is that we have the first candle on the Advent wreath lit. And maybe at home, your family is going to light candles at mealtime or some other special time. 
to mark the passing of the weeks that mean we're getting closer to Christmas. So it's a special time and a holy time. And so as you light the candles and as you say your prayers every day, remember that this is a season of preparing for the joy of Christmas that is coming quickly. And remember that we love you and we pray for you and we miss you and stay safe and it won't be too long. And now, my friends, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Several years ago, I learned about a very rare medical condition called Morvan's Syndrome. The symptoms of this peculiar disorder include muscle twitching pain, excessive sweating, periodic hallucinations, and severe agripnea which is also known as a loss of sleep. People who suffer with Morvan's might stay awake for days, weeks, and one poor soul, who was actually studied by researchers, stayed awake, they say, for somewhere between four and five months straight. Each day, his body would go into a weird subconscious state and he would hallucinate wildly, but the researchers noted that even with these 90-minute intervals, he was still technically awake. It sounds just awful. Therefore, says Jesus in our gospel lesson this day, keep awake. And with those words, my friends, today we enter once again into the holy season of Advent. The sanctuary, as you can see, is adorned in blue, representing the fact that we're preparing to again celebrate the birth of a king who came to us to love us and save us. The Advent wreath is up. It's serving as our hanging wheel of time with the growing light each week reminding us that we are getting closer as time passes. And the scriptures during this season are meant to get our attention as they shake us and wake us and hopefully help us to focus on all the right things as we move through these days. And in that vein, the passage this morning from Mark 13, I think, is a doozy. Suffering, snuffed sunlight, stars falling, and then the sun coming again. We have an apocalyptic vision joined to the image of a fig tree and a short parable about a man who goes away leaving his servants in charge. That's us, by the way, in case you didn't pick that up. And there is a warning to them that they'd better be awake when he comes back, it's the popular bumper sticker. Jesus is coming, look busy. Actually, the takeaway is Jesus is coming, be awake. So we get a foundational biblical and theological principle within the church today. He will come again to judge the living and the dead this one who was crucified and is raised, this one who died in love for us and loves us still. A hallmark of him is that he is the one who came to the world as promised. He is the one who will come again for us in the end. And he is the one who comes to us even in the here and now in mediated ways whereby we can see and know him when we see things through the lens of faith. But importantly, in all three of these Advent dimensions, it is incumbent upon us to do something, and that is to be ready, to be alert, and that can't happen if we're dozing off. So his words confront us again and remind us that we are to be and stay awake. A little bit of Morvan's syndrome, perhaps. Obviously, I'm being facetious because 
we know that Christ's warning isn't talking about the body. Rather, he's talking about our spirits, our spirits that get swept away in the tidal rhythms of the world and cause us to miss that which is most important in the eyes of God. If you know your American history, you probably remember that there were several periods in American history when people had veered off track and were asleep to things spiritual and to the cries of humanity close at hand to them. Into that time, God sent powerful preachers and as hearers were cut to the quick and convicted that they had fallen asleep during their watch period, they heard and they turned and repented and this dramatic spiritual fire that swept the landscape was called, as you probably know, the Great Awakening. Nowadays, there's a slang term that's sometimes used pejoratively, but I think it's uh, Genesis actually comes from the African-American community. And when I learned what it actually means, I rather liked it. The term is woke. And if you're woke, it means you have a spiritual sensitivity to those on the margins, those who have perhaps been marginalized and suffered quietly. And when you're woke, you now see them and can be a friend to them by seeking after justice and truth together with them. And as our text last week reminded us clearly, such a state of spiritual sensitivity might just help us to meet Jesus Christ in them, even as we're trying to carry him to others through our lives and our faithfulness. So let's wake up. Let's stay woke up. Let's have an Advent adventure that is rich and wonderful as we invite a great awakening to flood our repentant hearts with goodness and love and justice and peace and truth and sharing once more for the sake of God and the people that he loves so much. We need this and God's world needs us and the King is coming. So let's wake up and get ready. Amen. And now let us also confess what we know to be true through the words of the Apostles' Creed saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As a grateful response to God's great love in our lives, we now come into a time of offering. And our offerings work together by God's blessing to bring light and healing to a world of need. And so now I invite us to share in this holy time together.
Let us pray. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. And so we pray now as he has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, my friends, receive the blessing and benediction this day. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.